to get the most out of this defense, you want the first pass going into the baseline corner. We call that the coffin corner. And the reason we call that the coffin corner is because the disruptor and the wing are going to set a trap on the ball handler and using their bodies, the baseline, and the sideline, sometimes they're able to take away all four sides. All right, so let's see what that looks like. Okay, boom. Here comes the trap. All right, now they're using their hands, arms, legs, and feet to control the space around the ball handler. Look how both the players have their feet outside the ball handler's feet. So there's nowhere he can go without fouling them. Look at the hands. Look at the arms. They're controlling the space all around the ball handler, putting him in jail. Nothing he can do. Turnover. Same thing. Ball comes into the coffin corner. Disruptor immediately. Turn and sprint. If the disruptor isn't sprinting as fast as he can, this trap isn't going to happen. So turn and sprint. Watch how fast he gets up on the ball handler. Boom. All right? He barely had enough time to put the ball over his head, and already they closed the lid on the coffin, and there's nowhere to go. Here's the coffin right here. So see, he's pinned against the sideline, the baseline, and they're using their hands, arms, legs, and feet, and they're controlling the space all around the ball handler. So you can run a diamond press and be an effective player if you've never picked up a basketball in your life. It's all about using your body to control the space. Okay, so the success of a full court press depends entirely on the tenacity of the team. So strength, speed, discipline, um, those can all make up for a lot on a basketball court. And if you're able to overwhelm and overpower your opponent, you can take control of the court. You give yourself a pretty good chance of winning some basketball games. So that being said, it's a pretty risky strategy, and it doesn't work if you're not flying around the court at 100 miles an hour. So pay attention to how active the defense is and how much space they're able to control. Pay attention to how every time the ball moves, the entire defense turns and reacts in a dead sprint. Turn and sprint. Every single time the ball moves, turn and sprint. Boom. Okay. So he's able to squeeze this pass out of the trap and watch the two defenders turn and sprint. Boom. Okay. So the ball handler is looking up the court. We've got the passing lanes blocked up. So he's only got one choice. So he's got to dribble the ball up the court himself. Uh, not something he's comfortable doing. And you'll see the defense kind of closes in on him like a pack of lions. Watch. Boom. Right here. Okay. They got him blocked off from all corners. He picks the ball up and travels. It's a turnover. Okay, again, watch how the defense reacts every time the ball moves. Every player on the floor, every defender moves with the ball. Turn and sprint, turn and sprint, turn and sprint. All right, we're looking at the diamond press. This is the initial setup. When the play starts, I want you guys to look at the on-ball defender. He takes away the vision of the inbounder and forces him to do exactly what the defense wants him to do. Okay? So look, he's in his face, his hands are up, he's moving on his toes, and he's taking away the pass down court. The inbounder wants to throw it down court. He doesn't want to throw it into the back corner where he knows that his teammate's going to get trapped. So if we go back here, look at the passing lanes. They're all covered. He doesn't see an opening. 
he has to throw it back into the corner. Now here comes the first trap. Watch these two defenders. Watch their arms and their legs as they fly up on this dude. All right, they come out. They're blocking his vision. Look at the feet right here. The feet are almost locked together, so they're taking away his ability to split the trap and dribble up court. Their hands and their length is taking away the pass down the court, so he's forced to go back to number one right here. Right here. This is the disruptor. This was the on-ball defender. After that trap, he's going to turn and sprint up the floor. The interceptor, he was in the back of the diamond. He's now going to maintain a straight line with the ball. So he's going to push him. He's going to push the ball handler into this trap that they're setting at midcourt. Okay, watch right here. Now he's in a defensive stance. He knows exactly where he wants to trap, right at the mid-cord line, and he's taking away the middle of the floor. So he can't just dribble, and he's about to get trapped right here. All right? Just look at, look at his posture. He's aggressive, and this guy just doesn't know what to do with it. Dribbles up, loses his dribble, and he just strips it away from him. You're only going to use the diamond press after a made basket because that's the only time that you're going to have enough time to set up the formation. The pressure starts as soon as the ball goes through the basket. We have the disruptor taking away the middle of the floor and forcing the inbounder towards the sideline because he wants to get the ball towards the sideline that's the best place to trap so the inbounder wants to get the ball in the middle but no matter where he puts the ball the offense is at a disadvantage right look even though they have four players against three defenders they're still at a disadvantage because their spacing is so bad these two guys are right next to each other, and they're not communicating. So see what happens. So the disruptor forces the inbounder to make a poor decision. Okay, so these two guys are both going up to catch the same ball, not communicating, and look what happens. He catches the ball, and he's hemmed in on all four sides. So he's hemmed in by three bodies, and the sideline, He's in jail. He's just got nowhere to go. And he throws it away. 